All right, so today in the studio, I'm very happy for that. I'm always happy, like, come on now. I'm sitting here in between my paintings, right? One of the kings right here, another king sitting over there. He's not done yet, but we, I'm getting close to the end. <laughs> I think there's like a, like a painter's dilemma, right? You need to fix your ish. Just fix it, fix it. Okay, so the thing that I wanted to talk about today is one of the elements that is just needed in any artistic journey, I believe, and that is selling yourself. You need to sell yourself, right? Or L, like they would like to use you know, the, the, the official terminology. You need to be able to you know, market yourself, market your, not only your product, but also yourself. And I do believe that for a lot of uh, painters, that is something, well, let, let's say just artists, right? Especially if you're someone who is more behind the scene, you're someone who creates instead of somebody who is the performer. Like when you perform on stage or in front of the public, you're already used to people seeing you. You're already used to the fact that people are watching you. As a matter of fact, if people are not watching you, then, I mean, you still can perform. But what's really the use of it, right? What's, it ain't given. It's different for people that are more behind the scenes. You're sitting in your gallery or you're sitting in a studio. Even if it's a shared gallery, even if it's a shared studio, it's still a place where you are in your comfort zone. And I think that is one of the most critical elements in this particular segment of the video. It's the comfort zone. It is the zone where, yes, you can retreat. It's your own island and nobody gets to see you. Nobody gets to see what it is that you're creating. You literally are the director, the captain, the CEO, the boss, right? The leader of whatever it is that you are doing. But at the same time, when you stay too much in your comfort zone and you're not showing the pieces and the things and the things of the things that you are creating, it can also be your a, a slow death, right? And I'm, again, I think I have to say that in each and every single video, I'm not a hobbyist, okay? Th this, this is for real, okay? This is something that I'm working really hard on to have, not just as my professional career, but definitely as a source of income more about creating income in another video i'm not going to talk about this one but when you are in the realm where you want to be that professional artist you do have to consider the fact that you have to market yourself you really do have to sell yourself how do you place yourself in front of the audience without having the feeling that you are going through a slow death what do i mean by that Looking at myself in the beginning, I really was not looking forward to not just only put myself really out there, I was more focused on getting better. So for me to be in that comfort zone was actually a great way. It was like a concubiner, right? It's, it's a place where you just, you, you have to put that idea still in the womb so that it can grow into something solid and then you can birth it into the world and pop, here it is. But going from that stage to the place where I was like, okay, well now I'm ready to show whatever it is that I have for the people. That's not an easy thing. Okay. Because what I forgot in that is I'm also part of that. It is not just me showing paintings and the photos and the videos of it. No, I'm also part of the art. And not that I am the artwork or anything, but what I mean by that is I am the creator the story comes through these hands and this mind. I was actually not ready for that. I was also still developing my story in the beginning, so a lot of it was just feeling, if that makes sense. It was just the emotion of, I need to do something and put it on canvas. And the moment that it went from emotion to a, a practice, to a theory, a pretty flexible theory, which is still a little bit, you know, based on feelings and what it is that I'm experiencing, but also what I'm observing and being more critical of what it is that I'm observing and how I translate that into words. Yeah, you then come into play. 
hey, you need to market yourself, you need to sell yourself. It's not something that is really strange because for some reason people believe, especially artists, believe that, oh, I don't want to be in front of the camera. I don't know what it is that I have to say. Not every artist. Let me be honest. It's not every artist because there are enough artists that are definitely not camera shy and have no problem, you know, verbalizing whatever it is that they do or believe. So let's just make a quick disclaimer over here, okay? Because I don't want I don't want anybody to be here on the comment section being like, well, I am not, I don't have that trouble. Oh, okay, well, good for you. Good for you. Continue. But for me in the beginning, it really was a hard thing. I was not as comfortable as I am right now in front of the camera and that also took a lot of time. I was not as comfortable in the beginning as I am now speaking in front of people about what it is that I do and really being clear about the message, about the philosophy that I have over here and how I create things. Sometimes I still am not clear and I don't always want to be clear. I don't always want to be here and like, oh, I need to sell something, I need to, you know, sell myself to, to the public to, to make them see what it is. Like I already said, sometimes it can feel like a slow death. And that is exactly the part. The feeling where you kind of teeter tottering between the, between the area of, wanting to show what it is that you have and who you are so that people get to recognize you and get to see what it is that you have to offer and you just wanting to create and not have people be all up in your shit. Okay, I don't want people, everybody and everyone in my shit. I, I, I really don't want that. I want to make mistakes. I want to stop. I want to enjoy my life and sometimes just sit here in the studio and do nothing. I've done that. And it feels good. That is also part of, of my comfort zone. And going across that border, you know, one time you're in, in the land of the living, in one moment you're in the land of the leader where I am the captain and I don't want anybody to be here in this spot, is a very weird type of relationship, which I, like I already said, it feels like a slow death. If you too long in this in the in this area where people are just constantly in your business and everybody wants to know something or they're, they're asking questions and you ha you feel like you're giving pieces of yourself which which is basically is it's kind of like a slow death you need to know when you need to jump out and let things be the way they are or have somebody else do it for you that could be you have a representative, you have a manager that you have hired, maybe you're being represented by an art gallery. So then those things of selling yourself is now being forwarded to someone else or to something else, another entity. I still am in control in how much I market myself and how much I sell of myself. And I got to tell you that is very, is a weird space because I'm not a marketer. I'm not a marketeer. Am I saying it well? A marketer, a marketeer? Well, what is it that you say? I don't know. Put it in the comments. Let me know what it is that you say. I am not a salesperson. And it took a long time for me to understand, well, how can I make it to, into something that I feel that it represents me? It's not always going to be comfortable. I already let go of the, of, of the thought that it would be something that is comfortable because it takes work. And it's work that is not innately within me. I'm not a social media uh, uh, professional, right? I'm, I don't work for social media. I've never worked for a company in social media. You already know my background. I'm more from the financial administrative side. I have nothing to do with social media. The only thing that I had to do with social media in the beginning was posting a couple of pictures of my son and my of my son and myself. I mean, we look like a cute family. <laughs> That's it. But the moment that I started to understand that I could use social media to show more about myself and also market myself and how I needed to do that, that is when I felt that selling myself was really like a second, third, fourth, fifth job that I was taking on. Again, a slow death. And it took a long time for me to figure out what it was. I will be, even, listen, if I can give you full honesty, if I can give you full honesty, it will go like this. You sitting down? Okay, listen. If I can give you full honesty about how I eventually came to the point that I figured out a formula, my like my own formula, like my recipe, also when it came to the way that I was creating the videos, the way that I'm on, 
you know, Instagram and the way that I'm on, on, on tickety talk, the way I'm on Facebook. And I got to tell you, Facebook, I, I haven't been on Facebook that much, <laughs> but actually looking for ways that I can really promote myself, sell myself, not only on social media, but also in real life. You got to talk to people. You got to be networking with people. That's also part of selling yourself. When I start to develop really who I am, it started with the question of who am I? And not necessarily who do I need to be, right? I do feel that if you want to have a certain response, if you want to have a certain result, you do need to take into consideration all of the things that you have to become in order to pursue that, in order to bring that to life into action. You do have to put that actually, you have to take that into consideration because it's not going to come from the place where you're just an artist. The place where I'm just arting, that place doesn't, doesn't want to have anything to do with the fact that I need to market and sell myself. But the place where I do have to be, you know, kind of that marketeer in the social media um, whiz kid, <laughs> I have to be like a whiz kid in social media. In that place, I do want to be that person and understand all the tools where I, that I need to do. In the place where I'm like speaking and being the representative of me, MCJ Studio, and who I am, I do need to be that representative and take into consideration how I can quickly but also very clearly convey the message of who I am as an artist. It all plays part into the total bigger picture, but in the center, there will always be me, the artist, but it was just being an artist, okay? In the beginning, that was hard because n now I'm able to put myself in the center, but before that, I was just scattered and where there's just different, it's these different islands and I was on each and every single island and trying to, you know, create a whole system on each and every single island that I created for myself. That is exhausting. I do not recommend that to anybody, okay? I do not recommend that to everybody and anybody, especially if you're an artist or a creative. Don't do that, okay? Do not do that. And, the, and you know, the great thing about it is I went through it so that you now don't have to go through it. I can share that experience. So it's, it's kind of analogy, a great analogy of describing what I did wrong. I was just creating these islands of now here's the artist and it has to be just as big as being the social media whiz kid and has just it has to be just as big as, you know, uh, putting myself out there as a representative physically, um, contacting people and, and making sure that I'm also be seen and heard. All these islands, it's like being a juggler and you're just holding all of these balls up. I, I, can't, I can't do it. it. It was too much. It's too much. I really just had to come to terms with the fact that at the core, I am an artist. And around that, I can create different, you know, patios. There is one island and there are different patios. And the core, core, core of that is, of course, an artist, a business. And from that, I have different patios that I'm using to sell and market myself. One patio has a social media part. One patio has the representative part that I'm actually physically out in the world. One patio has the website where people can come to and they can, you know, gather information. They can see what it is that I do, who I am, what I sell, everything of those things. But I always have a core where all of the content, creativity, information comes from me, the center. That way of looking at myself has been less exhausting, less. It is still work. You know, you still have to pull up, you know, you still have to lift and do some things. You still have to work your muscle into that, but it is less exhausting. It is not so straining. I do not feel that I have to go beyond myself and forget the fact that I am still an artist. I still have to place myself first each and every single time. And that is also really a good reason why a lot of artists rather have like an art gallery or some type of representation do the heavy lifting for them. You see, you know, why people would do that? An art gallery is of course taking a huge investment and, and 
you know, cost in taking another artist in and also making sure that that artist is able to generate the income, the flow, and also, you know, the, 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 the notoriety that comes with it. But what an art gallery definitely can do is build that bond with, with an artist to see who they are, what it is that they need, and therefore create a really great way for them to be represented in, in such a way. Publicists, right? Them being able to market and sell the story to different outlets so that the artist doesn't have to go newspaper by newspaper, magazine by magazine, podcast by podcast, or whatever it is that they are using as a media outlet to tell the story, represent yourself. Social media managers, having a team from people who can do that for you. You just create the content, you send it, uh, you send it to the people they post it, and they make sure and manage it for you. Now, as you can already hear, that takes some work. And I absolutely understand why a lot of artists are like, I dread it, I dread it. Slow death, again, you see, slow death. <laughs> it really feels like a slow death. And it's not physically that you feel that you're going, you, you, you're, you're dying. It feels, you know, philosophically, right? A little bit of drama that I'm putting into it, but it feels that you're slowly taking pieces of yourself in order to uphold a business and also to make sure that you are selling yourself, marketing yourself, so that people get to see your story and are interested in what it is that you have to offer. Like these, these paintings that I have here in the back. Okay, these paintings in the back. Another issue in this, of course, uh, when it comes to marketing and selling yourself is having a clear story. Now we are getting into the meat of all things. I talked about, you know, the generality of the things and what you will see a lot of, of artists and creatives. I wouldn't say struggling, challenging themselves with is a challenge. We don't, we don't do struggle around here, okay? We don't do struggle. Now we come to another facet and that is what is definitely your story when you still have to figure out how you can word that it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to do that for yourself it took a couple of tries for me to do that right not because i'm a talkative person i'm able to verbalize and you know create clear thoughts for people doesn't mean that i'm also able to speak the language of whomever is in the art world and wants to see and hear what it is that I have to offer. That's not the same thing. It is not the same thing. There is a different language, a different attitude and a different culture that I still have to figure out. I don't know if I'm still, I don't know if I will ever figure it out. I don't know if I feel that I need to figure it out. But what I've noticed is, is that it's so different from where I, have ha, have had a lot of experience in it. That is, of course, the financial and and administrative world, my old world. Why do I take that into consideration, into this storyline? Here's the thing. When you're in a financial administrative work, a lot of things are very direct, concise, and based on numbers. So you have to be factual. The art world is not that. It's not that. The art world is not about the factuality of things, at least not all the time. The art world is not about the numbers and the, you know how accurate and concise you are. As a matter of fact, they want you to talk about the inner world and how, that, how people can step into that. What is it that your philosophy, your, your, your art practice is about and how are you translating that on canvas or in a sculpture or on video or in your performance? I do need to make an important note over here. Of course, numbers are important, whether you are in a museum, an art gallery, an independent artist. Numbers are important, they're important to me. What I'm specifically talking about is really the language. What is it that you say? What is the message that you convey? And yes, facts also do play part in that because the facts come from where we use, you know, inspiration from other artists, um, things that have happened factually, things that are, you know, in real life terms, part of the art world. Here, I'm really specifically talking about what is the language that you need to take for yourself? How do you develop that? 
which is of course totally different than what I'm used to. So that is actually what's right. Continue. What is it that you want people to take from it? Why do you create art? So as much as you're capable and able of, of, of telling what it is that you do and still stay close to who you are, you're on the right track. That, that's just the start. Okay, you're not finished yet. That's just the start. So I still know, and I do know that I have a lot of that in me, that, that financial concise way, and it doesn't translate well on paper. It translates well for creating budgets. It doesn't translate that well on paper. Because for a lot of people it's like, eh, I still don't understand what it is that you do. And I've noticed is that there's a certain language and I'm still trying to speak it. I, I, I listen, sometimes it still sounds like Chinese to me. Um, once you understand that and what also helps in marketing and selling yourself, is of course having a tribe, having people within that world, which I will come next to as another facet of marketing and selling yourself. Once you get to that point that you really have that for yourself, and it doesn't have to, you know, sound like the most abstract thing, you know, and people are like, oh my, oh gosh, oh gosh, it sounds so beautiful. Listen, people will call bullshit, okay? If, you, if you're bullshitting yourself, and not to say that people are not doing that, I, I, you know, people can poke through that. But at the other, you know, at the other side of the coin, you do have to understand what the language of it is. Um, and, and don't, I, I don't want you to dwell too much into the jargon, into technicalities, right? Do stay close to yourself. Eventually the people that will get it, they get it, okay? The girls and the boys that get it, they get it. And the girls and the boys who don't, just don't. They don't get it. They won't get it. They just don't get it, period. Okay, period. Um, but, but the way that I started to learn more about it is by talking to other artists and also being present and reading on it, watching on it, going to other people and hearing them speak about it. It's a lot, it's a lot. And I'm still learning, okay? So I don't know if I'm ever gonna be great at it, but that I think is also the beauty of showing that into this, you know, in, in this part of the journey that I'm in. It's, it's, it's ever evolving. And maybe eventually that might be something for someone else to do, okay? So now we're coming to the other facet where I made a small interlude, you know, I made a small introduction interlude to that, a bridge. And I think it's in every single area where you're in. I've noticed that in my old life and now being a professional artist, I still notice that here. And it's everywhere. If you have people that can vouch for you, if people that are in the business, in the industry, and they are in certain places, certain levels, certain places and seats, positions it is it, it, it is great to have people vouch for you so that they can sell the story that you have as well for you they can sell you to other people especially the places where you would like to be is that available for everybody no hence the amount of of artists that are proportionally a lot bigger than the number of artists that specifically and directly are in the places where they are being seen in museums, being represented in art galleries, are literally thriving from their art because it's being sold, it's being licensed, it's being, it's being used for reproduction, etc., etc., etc. That is a huge skew, like skewed all the way. I don't know if it's to the left or the right. Y'all let me know if it's to the left or the right. So you got the group of artists that are just arting. And you have the group of artists that are considered to be artists because they are in the art world. Having people that can do that for you, and you can call them gatekeepers. In my podcast, The Creative Fold, I've talked about actually the importance of having gatekeepers and why gatekeepers are important, right? Because a lot of people are very negative about gatekeepers. I would say 
it could have a negative side, but it definitely has a couple of pros. Um, it is definitely a great way for you to have people be on your side. They are able to, to mention your name in spaces where you are not there yet. You're just not there yet. And even, listen, I already hear what it is that you're saying. I hear you. Come on, you're here on this channel. I already hear you. I hear what it is that you're saying. You might be saying, well, listen. I know the artists that are, you know, being considered to be great artists. I know people in the art world, and I'm still not getting them the places where I need to become. Listen, where I need to become, where I need to be, where, 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 where you know, the bad thing, man, I'm a little bad. <laughs> I don't know what it is that you're talking about. I know, I know, <laughs> I, I, so, I so get it because even with that backup or those connections and the people that you might know, it is not a guarantee. I never said it would be a guarantee. Now I said it could help you, but I never said it would be a guarantee. It is, it is not a guarantee for you to get to the spaces where you are. Eventually it still comes down to you, right? It still comes down to you because you could easily be a perfect person with the art that is maybe needed in the world and your art is definitely needed in the world don't ever forget that your art is needed but you might just be wrong timing right it might be that the attention is on someone else the attention might be on a different group of people it might be that that what is needed is maybe not wanted yet or desired hey i don't know what to tell you you know and and that is also something that if feels unfair or, can, or could be experienced as unfair but it's also the way of the world it's kind of